Uh, it's uh, my great pleasure to uh, welcome here uh, Mr. Zaradash Ahmed. Uh, welcome here in Prague. And I'm very happy that you could be here uh, with us uh, to present uh, your film, Nowhere to Hide. Uh, but not only the film, uh, but also uh, your creative method uh, with which you work as a documentary uh, filmmaker. Uh, Mr. Uh, Zaradasht Ahmed uh, is a Norwegian Kurdish uh, filmmaker. Uh, his background is uh, in studying uh, TV and multimedia production and visual arts. And uh, uh, as a filmmaker, uh, he's most focused on uh, Middle East, on, on the region and uh, on the uh, social and political issues happening in this region, in uh, North Africa and uh, uh, Southeast Asia. Uh, in 1991, uh, Mr. Ahmed uh, left uh, Iraq and in 1995 uh, he obtained the status of refugee in uh, Norway uh, where he subsequently uh, got also his citizenship, so he's a Norwegian citizen uh, and that was, uh, an, um, uh, that was the reason why he could go back to Iraq uh, and uh, film there. Uh, again uh, with this new citizenship. Uh, among his uh, many films that were screened on various televisions in different countries throughout the world and also festivals throughout the world, uh, there is the film Persecuted from 2008, The Road to Diyarbakir from 2010. Uh, this one was uh, shown on televisions in more than seven countries. And Fata Morgana from 2013, and this film was uh, very successful uh, on the film festivals uh, throughout the world. And then, of course, the film that we will also see tonight, uh, Nowhere to Hide, from 2016, uh, which also won the main uh, award uh, at the biggest documentary film festival in the world, uh, ITFA, uh, in Amsterdam. So, once again, I'm very happy that you are here uh, with us. And uh, we will be uh, speaking in this master class uh, about how you work as a filmmaker and how you think about uh, the creative decisions that you uh, have to make uh, to uh, make uh, these uh, very unique uh, testaments uh, that you uh, shoot in very complicated uh, countries. Uh, so. Maybe uh, uh, at the beginning, uh, I would be very happy if uh, you can uh, say us uh, what was uh, your main uh, personal reason uh, to choose uh, to go uh, back to Iraq and, sh uh, and shoot uh, a film, Nowhere to Hide, or uh, subsequently you didn't shoot, shoot the film, uh, but the protagonist did, we will get to that. Uh, but uh, uh, I'm interested uh, in your original uh, motivation, uh, of course, that uh, you come from that country, uh, but what was the force uh, that, uh, uh, that made you go back there and explore the region and issues there once again? First of all, thank you for coming. Uh, it's my pleasure to be here. I've been in Brach uh, many times. Uh, last time was uh, during the One World uh, Film Festival, which was very nice. Um, uh, how many of you is uh, uh, filmmakers, like documentary people? Uh, the rest, what, what the, are, are you like a fiction or? Working with fiction? Okay. Um, uh, I, I am a filmmaker uh, and also an uh, activist. Um, That's why uh, one of the reasons uh, always forced me, not only back to Iraq, but also choosing the areas where I feel like I can um, do something. Uh, do something uh, for many people can be different things. Uh, some people write, some people uh, make uh, music, some people make stands, uh, 
go politicians. Uh, I make film. I, I like to use that too for trying to change something. Mm -hmm. um, Iraq, uh, it's um, where I come from, it's uh, part of me. Uh, my origin is from there. Uh, and it's always um, uh, culturally and also uh, my personal, the one I am today, uh, it's a lot has to do with that. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so therefore, uh, anything happening there, good uh, or bad, it will always make me like my heart beats. Mm -hmm. And it's always, it beat more, it hits more when it's back in. Mm -hmm. uh, it was uh, heartbreaking for me, uh, seeing the, uh, the country was bombed by the American. Uh, as all of you maybe were younger uh, uh, during that time. Um, um, but it was a very brutal uh, uh, bombing that uh, does something to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and also after that, this three, 2003 and the, the years after was, uh, as you know, uh, the rise of ISIS and the civil war in Iraq <coughs> and still going on today also forced me to think more about that part of the world and try to understand first and then make people understand it. Mm -hmm. So that's why I am. And, uh, your position is that you want to eyewitness the events that are happening there to show them to the rest of the world and may maybe also through this trying to change something because of course, we first need awareness that something is happening, and then we can uh, think about the options what to do with it. Uh, and this uh, eyewitnessing position is, of course, something uh, very natural for a documentary filmmaker, but uh, it is quite different or complicated in uh, such hard conditions as war. And uh, in Iraq, uh, there was there was a war. You uh, wanted to make the film Nowhere to Hide. Uh, uh, you started in 2011, where the American troops uh, went away, uh, but the ISIS were uh, becoming stronger, and there were still fights. There was still a, it was still a war zone. Uh, so so what, what is the what is the difference or what are the specificities of being an eyewitness in a war zone? Uh, again, as, as a uh, documentary filmmaker, you, you, uh, you are a, a person with power and a person with a, a, a ability to be a witness or to back up a witness. In my case, uh, in Iraq, uh, uh, the, the one need for documenting, the one need for telling a story of, of Iraq. Um, and I started with that in 2010. Uh -huh. uh, the film starts from 2011, like the frame for the film, and uh -huh. end in uh, end of 2016. But I already start working with Iraq uh, case in uh, 2010 uh -huh. Uh -huh. by trying to understanding based on based on cases. So. First of all, like you, you think you are an eyewitness, you are a witness. An eyewitness is the one see thing, the one present to things. But a witness is the one inviting himself to be a witness, in a way. When you are a film person, like you're going to try to document. So you invite yourself to that. Uh, but in case of Iraq, uh, it was not that easy to invite yourself. Uh, like uh, you do here in Brach, I can come here. Um, the worst case scenario is like you get the permission to have camera to you and go to those places that sensitive. But mainly you can go with the camera. In Iraq it's not possible. A camera is the most dangerous thing. It's more dangerous than a weapon. Because it's witness. Because it's documenting. Because it's documenting corruption, that people who are corrupt they're afraid, and also people who are terrorists, they're afraid also. Also people who are terrorists documenting for the bad purposes, 
so it's it's the, the, the anything it's like witnessing something uh, so my uh, my uh, point was to document what was going on uh, in Iraq as a you know case studies and bringing stories out mm -hmm. but uh, after three years of working with that uh, things changed so it became another film in the end. so mm -hmm. you will see the film later on but three years I was depending on people who bring things to me uh, and I also was shooting a part of the uh, the film uh, so and you find out uh, uh, very fast when you are in this kind of conflict zone that you uh, in a way uh, not the number one witness because uh, you already not live there uh, and you already not part of that society or where the thing happening mm -hmm. and also you cannot be everywhere mm -hmm. which in case of Iraq needed to be and uh, the film is very special it's like uh, now when the media talks about it's talk about like a new genre uh, where uh, this is the, the style of only this way you can document to get close to what's happening in the war zone and what's happening in the war zone too the victims to the civilians mm. so you cannot be everywhere you cannot be witness fully witness so either you end up like a embedded if you go to get permission like if I uh, were trying to get safe and document the only way is to uh, apply so either you are with American or with the central government with the troops like you see in TV about Mosul and where they, they, are, they are all protected by the, the army. Mm -hmm. And then that's not a full witnessing. You are witnessing one side of the thing. And often they, sh they put you those places where they want you to see. So they show you what you want to see. Then you are not a good witness. Then you are a, 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 a weak witness, a manipulated witness. The other option is to join some of the groups of these uh, like rebels or terrorist groups uh, to uh, join them in order to see it from their point of view and also they don't allow you to see the so in in this uh, equation the always the main people that you are going to witness that they are going to help bring justice to them or bring their story out Nobody care. Nobody focus on them. Mm. Neither the side nor, nor the other side. So you need to. In my case, it was like I I have to rely on the first hand witness, the locals, people who are actually staying there. And for that, uh, uh, I got access to a, a brilliant network of medics that. Uh, one of uh, my colleagues, uh, Dr. Hans Husum, he's a war surgeon. Uh, he, uh, he invited me to that network because it's a very lock close network. It's like you, you, you don't know about it. It's because of the safety. Uh, and it was just like a paradise for me to be invited to that network. So that tells me a lot to get access the first thing. And uh, so that's that's the way it started uh, with the work, with the film, with the idea, and then researching and uh, finding the, where to film, finding all the, the other elements of it. It's really very interesting how you uh, divided the options uh, that you have uh, in these really uh, very specific conditions uh, all over there uh, in, uh, in Iraq. And uh, I know that we have a, an excerpt here that we can uh, screen part of uh, part of the the film, one of the previous films, uh, where we can uh, talk about this position of uh, of the uh, witness and his uh, possibilities uh, more. So uh, maybe we can play the excerpt. Um, it, it's like the, my I brought three films. Uh, uh, one uh, um, I didn't know I was witness to that. Like uh, later on, you understand your your power mm. when you start to uh, be you know co have good control over your tools, and the language of the film is developing. So you are more you feel like you can be powerful uh, 
the storyteller. So the film uh, here, I um, have a, a good friend uh, called Joan Hajo. He's our Bob Dylan. Um, uh, no, he's he's a Kurd, Kurdish. I'm, I'm a Kurd. I'm I'm Kurdish from uh, Kurdistan, Iraq, and Kurdistan is like a big country between four countries. So so that's other part of me that uh, he's Kurd from Turkey, Syria. He's also part of that area. Uh, but never mind. Uh, so he was uh, blacklisted in Turkey. That's before Turkey came uh, with the process of getting into EU. Uh, like you see now, it's like a trouble between Germany and, and Turkey. Uh, so at that time, in 2005, it was a big thing, big event. Uh, uh, Turkey was doing their best to get into EU, and then they did reforms, political reforms. And my friend, uh, Juan Hajo, his music was banned. Like, he, no way in, in, uh, in Turkey was allowed to listen to his music, uh, neither in Syria at that time. And um, he was banned as a political musician. Uh, so in 2005, they invited him. Suddenly things changed, and then he was welcome in Turkey. Uh, and he called me. Uh, I was uh, studying uh, film at that time. Uh, I was my second year. Uh, and I had uh, like an old uh, uh, PD 170, uh, Sony PD 170s, like, you know, SD. Um, and then uh, he asked me, do you want to join? You know, oh, I've been invited, you know, like, because we've been talking all about it, you know, the life in exile and all this. Mm -hmm. So he invited me, so I made a film about that. I made a film about him uh, going through that. So I was, uh, in a way, witnessing his uh, return into his country and, and reunited with his audience and we were expecting like 50, 60,000 in that one concert, so there were one million people came. So uh, already by then there was like a weakness in that million and feeling this vibration on the stage. I was terrified because one million people and maybe more uh, outside there, it's like a very, very terrifying vibration in the air, you know. And it's, it feels very, very ter terrifying. <laughs> Anything they do, you will be smashed uh, away. And they were so keen of listening to him. They were so happy. Uh, everything went well. It was a beautiful moment. So I witnessed that. But I was a filmmaker by then. And I could, and I like to, you know, talk about that. Uh, so my humanism part was not that much developed by that time as a filmmaker. So I'm going to show you some, some parts just to get to know the, the type of the work, so this is a different one. Mm -hmm. And it's a road to... Uh, the road to the Arbekir. So it's uh, an excerpt from the film Road to the Arbekir from uh, 2010. Yani <laughs> أو أنا حمو تأثير متكر تأثيرك الروحي المتكر بشر نعلت الشربة أم شرنا خوازي كسرك شو بشرنا خوازي كسرك ناخوازي قنسان بمرن أم بعشتي أم بحقي زمان أو حقي ماو إن بوريام بملطي بوريام بخلقتي بوريام بإنساني فقيرتي بإنساناتي
was the first part of um, the film that when we go in and uh, we start to uh, get to know uh, his family um, um, I follow him and inviting me so I, I will show you another clip soon uh, after uh, when we arrive we are still in the beginning I will not show you all the film um, just to make a point uh, here it's more uh, I am in a way talking about the point of view, that's a filmmaker's point of view, through Joan Hadro, through uh, this artist. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm still this guy with the ambition of making a film about a topic that partly is, it's also I'm interested in, and I, I choose to be. I, I choose to make something about that part, which it was the conflict of being a, a, an exile, a re refugee, you nobody know, know you in the in the, 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 the host country that, uh, like me, like him, uh, <coughs> being an exile person, living in exile. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, in a way, that was the, the thing. It's, it's also, I was living the same thing. So it was a film about me and him, in a way. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm interested uh, if uh, uh, th there is a, a difference uh, between uh, your involvement or engagement uh, in uh, the film, which has uh, a very uh, socially uh, and politically important topic, but still the, uh, it's not in the war zone, it's uh, with a character that you already know, and it's uh, in a way a, a positive event that is happening because there is some uh, some good step uh, have, uh, that have been made uh, that he could have the, the concert and he could express uh, this uh, opinions that he was uh, talking uh, speaking uh, on the on the stage. Uh, so um, if you uh, uh, feel that you uh, wanted to pursue, uh, to, to, to emphasize your uh, uh, point of view, your opinion uh, uh, in this kind of film in the same way uh, that you are uh, or you feel that you have to uh, in the films that are from the war zones and more uh, uh, difficult environments. Yeah. Uh, the, the motivation was different. Like uh, this mm. film, uh, no, uh, uh, the road to the Arbaker, the motivation in itself is different. Like I was interested. Uh, it was diff it was dangerous in Turkey as well. You know, like police were everywhere, and then you know, mm. like but it was a time for peace. Mm. So we were not provocating people. Uh, and I, I got to be honest. Uh, uh, I got to what I wanted. I had a really good local assistance and people made everything easy for me. Um, so it was a good process. It was, uh, you know, the worst thing would have been uh, police coming saying, um, um, you know, say, say a couple of bad words to you and then, you know, take a camera from you or something like that. But never, you know, risking your life <laughs> or make those who I was filming make them risk their lives. Um, so. So my, my motivation of doing that film was also something I wanted to tell. Mm. So it was about the point of view. Mm. And it's more about my point of view than it's Joanne's point of view in this film. Because it's, this is a traditional, typical a documentary, a road movie. Uh, you follow the guy, you, you follow with him, this guy, he, he haven't been there for 20 years and now he's uh, reunited with this a bit of an audience and he's long into his past and he, he, he he's a very passionate peace person and he's also his family being part of that conflict his brother got killed and is still pain in him but he chose this you know this peace thing and I was the one agreeing with him and he could do by music and I could do by film mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then you know, trying to push the peace process forward. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, to do it like that, with the music, with a nice atmosphere, and a very nice uh, feeling, good, feel good movie. Mm -hmm. So it was, uh, it was everywhere, everybody loved Joan, uh, like they were like a, <laughs> and he's a very uh, charming person. Mm -hmm. So th that's how this film is different uh, mm -hmm. than Nowhere to Hide. Nowhere to Hide is more, 
um, about their point of view, the victim's point of view. Mm -hmm. So everything else has changed. Everything else, else should be uh, under mm -hmm. uh, that uh, right by that. Mm -hmm. Anything else should be uh, out mm -hmm. only their point of view. So that was the difference. Mm -hmm. That, that's very important to, uh, to say this because, as you pointed out at the beginning, uh, that uh, it, it very much depends on the circumstances uh, how you can shoot and what you can shoot. And uh, in these difficult circumstances in, uh, in Iraq, you can either be accompanied by one side or by another side, uh, or if you really uh, want to uh, shoot the, uh, the victims, you, you need them and, and their point of view. So, so yeah, this, this, is, this is a very important uh, difference between... Uh, yeah, embedded or not embedded. You know, like uh, today, uh, uh, to, to go sp only in the war zones, you have to be uh, embedded uh, with the troops. Mm -hmm. They say because of your safety, they say uh, we want you to, uh, you know, not get killed, but it's a lie. You, journal has been working all the, all the time by their own, and they've been risking their lives. And lots of them got killed, injured during their work. And now uh, they are controlling that. Now they say, um, we, uh, we want your safety, and then they don't allow, mm -hmm. allow them. So it's like embedded or not embedded. Embedded is also not embedded. It has to do with the point of view. In a, in a documentary filmmaking, and also in a fiction, it's very important to have this who you are telling the story through, through eye of who. It's, uh, and in nowhere to hide, it's conflicted with, with mine and Nuri Sharif, the main character that I follow. And um, in the end, because this topic was like, a, you know, everything it should be dedicated to that case. So mm -hmm. it was not, not mm -hmm. about the filmmaking, it was not about my opinion about the war. It was fully about him. So it's very important to have that point of view clear. It can be developed in the end. It can be, uh, you can uh, allow to change you know, from one point of view to another one, but it should be very clear. Mm -hmm. And maybe you should play another excerpt. And, uh, yeah, and yeah, uh, just that, you know, you do not uh, keep it dry all the time with the talking. And uh, we are a little bit uh, in a, in like uh, we have passed the first act in the Juan, Juan's film, uh, the act, we are going to act two, um, and then the, the down thing, uh, we are approaching a concert, so uh, because he was so popular, uh, 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 to avoid the fans coming and then, you know, uh, stopping the car, and they tried to put him in an ambulance, so... Uh, yeah, so you have to film in, inside that ambulance. It was a terrible experience, but uh, I, you know, uh, it was nice for the image. Uh, so we are we are on our way to the first concert. Now, this is not the million one. Mm -hmm. This is like 250 plus people came, and um, we are just going from one point to another mm -hmm. to him to to perform. Mm -hmm. So let's go. Also wir fahren jetzt äh, zu Kusseltepe, auch mit Musiker, alle sind wir in einem Auto, aber dort, äh, Giovanni geht in eine Ambulanz, einen Krankenwagen und äh, dann wir gehen zur Bühne und äh, er bleibt in diesem Krankenwagen. Also so, das haben wir geplant, aber ich weiß nicht, ob dieser Plan funktioniert oder nicht. Das, das werden wir alles zusammen erleben. يعني أزيد هرتش دي الدليم ده تخم مش أفهم. Ja, 
kesmeniz lazım. Burayı kesmeniz lazım. Sahneye kesmeniz lazım. Kurum mu? Burası da hayır mı? O herkes mi hesap verdi? To which extent this Kurdish Bob Dylan influenced what you shoot it? Because you were in dialogue with him, and of course that you said it was your point of view, right? You were the filmmaker, but still you were with him, and I guess or I presume, maybe I'm not right. Uh, he also had some idea what should be in the film and what should not be in the film. So I wonder, uh, with this approach, when you are the observer, uh, but you have a very strong protagonist, uh, with the message that you are going in the harmony with the message uh, of this protagonist uh, of yours, uh, how much he can influence uh, what you shoot and how you shoot it. Yeah, in, in this style, uh, I, I think uh, he didn't have too much chance to, you know, to interfere. Because I knew him very well, he was my friend, um, and he was naked to me. There was lots of things I knew about him, and he could not play uh, like uh, this kind of melon stage, you know, when... Mm -hmm. He's uh, totally different with other journalists, like he's a magnet for journalists. Uh, Mm. TVs and all, you know, like they make hundreds of uh, interviews with him, but no film, as this is the only film that's made about him. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, just because of the trust, that access to him, personal, and uh, the trust of the, you two are meeting in the motivation of making the film. Like, mm -hmm. you two mm -hmm. have uh, 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 goodwill for making that film. Uh, and then, uh, of course, there are things he don't agree to be in the film. Sometimes characters are a little bit, uh, they, are, they have another world. They think like, they may tell you, uh, well, this shirt is not good. Ah, oh, my shirt is like this, you know. Uh, w that's totally, totally uh, very uh, pathetic for you, maybe, you know, what? The scene is totally uh, different than what you uh, think and what he think. So they can be like that. Uh, these things are, it's you are the boss. But for the point of view, for the point of view, of course you need to have your own integrity. And integrity means uh, you, you want to have the point of view that you think is good, it's right to make that film. But making a film is a big effort. Now you are maybe in the beginning of the the process, but you know when you go further with bigger issues and make bigger production, it's a lot of uh, effort. There's a lot of money, a lot of time, and uh, other people's involved, and uh, you have to you have to be clear of uh, what is the that you are burning for. Uh, what's your what you are interested in? How you want to angle it? How how you what do you want to tell? Why? All these questions that you have to answer. Um, so this film and the next one that I am going to show part of it, 
it's all about that, you know, being part of something, joining something. But also you have meaning. You want to say something through that film. You allow them to talk. Joanne, I allowed him to talk, but not always. Like what he's saying, I control it, in a way. Mm -hmm. Control it based on the film, based on the mm -hmm. story, the, that manuscript that you have in your mind. Uh, and that's after, uh, of course, in the documentary film also, you have to remember, it's not like a fiction. Fiction, you have a script that is uh, pre-finished, <coughs> like you have uh, fixed, and then you, you build the visual. In documentary, the best way, uh, I don't like working with a finished manuscript. I just allow things happen, and I change my point of view. Mm -hmm. I change my angling throughout the, the development of the, the character or the, or the story. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So in, in this case, uh, uh, we are still like, it's me controlling, it's me who asking him whatever. Mm -hmm. I want the answer about it. It's me who are choosing to be where and mm -hmm. how to film. It's very important that we talk about this because uh, in the second half of the uh, masterclass we will focus on the film Nowhere to Hide, uh, which was mainly uh, shot uh, by, uh, by uh, the other persons, by the protagonists themselves or uh, one uh, protagonist. Uh, so it's a completely different uh, kind of work then. So that's why it's important we talk about these questions also now. And maybe we can now play the excerpt from Fata Morgana. F uh, Fata Morgana, uh, uh, I was... Uh, uh, that's, we are in uh, 2005. Um, it was like the time where... Um, where there were like uh, the wave of uh, the boat refugees. Both refugees came from uh, Cameroon, came from uh, uh, S uh, Senegal, came from the Sahara, south of Morocco, uh, and then through Morocco, through Algeria, and then to Grand uh, Canary, and it became a big case. Like It was like everybody uh, jumping after. Refugees were respected at that time, like they were human. We, you know, media look at them as a you know, respectful human being at that time. So everybody wanted to make things about them. I wanted to, I went um, to Morocco, um, I went down to south, and then by the way going down, I uh, took the north part, I went to Tangier, that's between Spain, uh, like uh, uh, where Gibraltar is, uh, where Spain, uh, Europe meet Africa. And that's the town there. And then suddenly I found another type of refugees. No, not refugees, but people, dreamers. Mm -hmm. They wanted to go mm -hmm. to, to the other side, to, you know, to make the, uh, the, the good life. Um, uh, so so I, I, I found that was more interesting uh, to follow uh, than the, everybody else's story. I, like everybody was uh, going with the boats and, you know, like all these things. Uh, I like it to do that, to, I went for that, but then when I saw this group, I totally changed my mind. I, I stayed and then I went back. I continued filmed like over one and a half year without any fund. So I spent all my money on it and then go back and, you know, establish it. took six years um, to follow how the characters are developed. I follow a group of uh, young people. They are poor, they have nothing, and they are the cheapest way of traveling. Like they, they don't spend a penny of the traveling and illegally. None of them has passport or some of them they don't have um, ID papers. Now you hear about them, these Moroccan young people. Uh, also at that time they were traveling, they were doing the same thing. And now some of them has problem in Germany and you know like those uh, North African cases with the, yeah, with the, uh, lots of uh, being in media. So at that time there were also some of them. And I follow a group um, just to show another type of witnessing. Mm -hmm.
Uh, it's uh, my great pleasure to uh, welcome here uh, Mr. Zaradash Ahmed. Uh, welcome here in Prague. And I'm very happy that you could be here uh, with us uh, to present uh, your film, Nowhere to Hide. Uh, but not only the film, uh, but also uh, your creative method uh, with which you work as a documentary uh, filmmaker. Uh, Mr. Uh, Zaradash Ahmed uh, is a Norwegian Kurdish uh, filmmaker. Uh, his background is uh, in studying uh, TV and multimedia production and visual arts. And uh, uh, as a filmmaker, uh, he's most focused on uh, Middle East, on, on the region and uh, on the uh, social and political issues happening in this region, in uh, North Africa and uh, uh, Southeast Asia. Uh, in 1991, uh, Mr. Ahmed uh, left Iraq, and in 1995, uh, he obtained the status of refugee in Norway, uh, where he subsequently uh, got also his citizenship, so he's a Norwegian citizen, uh, and that was uh, an, um, uh, that was the reason why he could go back to Iraq uh, and uh, film there. Uh, again uh, with this new citizenship. Uh, among his uh, many films that were screened on various televisions in different countries throughout the world and also festivals throughout the world, uh, there is the film Persecuted from 2008, The Road to Diyarbakir from 2010. Uh, this one was uh, shown on televisions in more than seven countries. And Fata Morgana, from 2013, and this film was uh, very successful uh, on the film festivals uh, throughout the world. And then, of course, the film that we will also see tonight, uh, Nowhere to Hide, from 2016, uh, which also won the main uh, award uh, at the biggest documentary film festival in the world, uh, ITFA, uh, in Amsterdam. So, once again, I'm very happy that you are here uh, with us. And uh, we will be uh, speaking in this masterclass uh, about how you work as a filmmaker and how you think about uh, the creative decisions that you uh, have to make uh, to uh, make uh, these uh, very unique uh, testaments uh, that you uh, shoot in very complicated uh, countries. Uh, so. Maybe uh, uh, at the beginning, uh, I would be very happy if uh, you can uh, say us uh, what was uh, your main uh, personal reason uh, to choose uh, to go uh, back to Iraq and, sh uh, and shoot uh, a film, Nowhere to Hide, or uh, subsequently you didn't shoot, shoot the film, uh, but the protagonist did. We will get to that. Uh, but uh, uh, I'm interested uh, in your original uh, motivation. Uh, of course, that you, know, you come from that country, uh, but what was the force uh, that, uh, uh, that made you go back there and explore the region and issues there once again? First of all, thank you for coming. Uh, it's my pleasure to be here. I've been in Brach uh, many times. Uh, last time was uh, during the One World uh, Film Festival, which was very nice. Um, uh, how many of you is uh, uh, filmmakers, like documentary people? Uh, the rest, too, what, what the, are, are you like a fiction or working with fiction? Okay. Um, uh, I, I am a filmmaker uh, and also an uh, activist. Um, that's why uh, one of the reasons uh, always forced me, not only back to Iraq, but also choosing the areas where I feel like I can um, do something. Uh, do something uh, for many people can be different things. Uh, some people write, some people uh, make uh, music, some people make stands, uh, 
go politicians. I make films. I, I like to use that to for trying to change something. Mm -hmm. um, Iraq, uh, it's um, where I come from. It's uh, part of me. Uh, my origin is from there. Uh, and it's always um, uh, culturally and also uh, my personal, the one I am today, uh, it's a lot has to do with that. Uh, so, so therefore, uh, anything happening there, good uh, or bad, it will always make me like my heart beats. And it's always, it beat more, it hits more when it's bad thing. Uh, it was uh, heartbreaking for me uh, seeing the uh, the country was bombed by the American, uh, as all of you maybe were younger uh, uh, during that time. Um, um, but it was a very brutal uh, uh, bombing that uh, does something to me. Mm -hmm. uh, and also after that, this three. 2003 and the, the years after was, uh, as you know, uh, the rise of ISIS and the civil war in Iraq and still going on today also forced me to think more about that part of the world and try to understand first and then make people understand it. Mm -hmm. So that's why I yeah. am. Uh, your position is that you want to eyewitness the events that are happening there to show them to the rest of the world and may maybe also through this trying to change something because of course we could think of you know using a couple of footages from whatever they do but mainly it was me like mm -hmm. I always maybe in a one year one time I, I went back like eight nine times because they were calling well today we are going to the harbor uh, or in one week we are going to the harbor. So I was flying there and then yeah, waiting. Sometimes they didn't. Sometimes they just, you know, like it's like that. So I had to, you know, and then that was the way. So, mm -hmm. so still it's me controlling, still it's my footage. I want my footage and, and not instructing them, not giving them the tool of telling the stories, you know, mm -hmm. just document whatever, you know. But I have a lot of boring material they you know seeing all the time and, you know but to understand their life that was the research purpose to have enough uh, you know material to understand it mm -hmm. جايه في الوسط معليش فين غادي نطلع هو براسو ورا ما نبقاش فين يضرب ندير بطاطس خرس نخرس من دار خرس الزنقه يعني ست سنوات ما معلمش مزيان ما عنديش شي نيفو مزيان تقفت انا في يعني في بحال موكا في الزنقه وهذه يعني الثقافه ديال الزنقه راه من الثقافه ديال 
الدراسه يعني الثقافه ديال الدراسه يعني تتكون المعامله So this this was your footage or footage made by uh, by by them? Uh, this is um, uh, these are these are my footage, yeah. uh, uh -huh. but okay. um, based on also footages from the other small camera that I gave to them. Uh -huh. yeah. mm -hmm. uh, at that time, as I told you, you know, like uh, you can, uh, I you know, it's like the film should be yours. You have to do this, the difficult scenes. So there are many difficult scenes that I, I in the end I am going with them, and then I, like it's a long story. But 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 did, but did you did you uh, in, uh, uh, did you instruct them? Uh, did, did you tell them? Uh, I saw that you do this on the footage that you shoot it. So now please make it again for me, uh, for my camera. Yeah. Uh, this is also for like uh, we can uh, shed shed light on this one just for the to get you know more experience. Like to maybe I can help you with that experience. Um, so uh, it's very simple. Then I thought it was very simple. It's uh, you have a harbor where there is uh, tourists coming. If one time you go to Morocco, it's a very nice place. This town is beautiful. You should visit. You go to Tanji. There is uh, the harbor not exist now. It changes more fancy. Uh, so when when you when you take the boat, go in there. So it's a harbor, and then the other way to Spain, the harbor goods. Uh, Uh, tourists and you know transportation and also lots of uh, camions mm -hmm. trailers mm -hmm. back and forth um, so before the trailers go to the harbor because the harbor is controlled by police anyone go in you have to show your idea and if you go abroad this is a like a transit area so it's mm -hmm. like you cannot go in without passport and then without the permission to travel so they need to go in illegally And the two ways of that uh, to go in. One, it's uh, already getting to these camions that you see. That's uh, like uh, four or five kilometers outside the harbor. There is a Rabat road, uh, the capital road, where these uh, camions and trailers are driving. And there are traffic lights. So when the camion and uh, the trailer stop, so they go in under the dock, under the, you know, where the... The shaft mm. is this big shaft for the for the for the tires, mm. so they stay there all boxes on us. So they, they, it's a very dangerous thing, very dangerous. Uh, when I was, that was one of the reason I changed my mind. I stayed in there. I stayed in Tangier. I skipped the Africa boat refugees because I saw it myself and I was shocked, really shocked. And uh, I was like, ah, oh, you know, like, oh, I don't do that. You know, oh, like, you know, your heart is, you know, kids are jumping in and some of them die, some of them. Um, there, there's a lot of cases of that. Um, and then uh, uh, I started researching. They say, yeah, well, this we do it every day. You know, I found this group that I follow. Uh, and the kid that he started to talk, I was 14, he's a Faisal. I followed him throughout these six years, all the changes. Uh, he was very young at that time, uh, like I think he was uh, less than 18. Uh, so um, it's like just following. So uh, mm -hmm. I, and that's, that's the ethical thing coming in. Uh, you cannot provocate that scene. I could never provocate that scene. What if somebody died in it? That was the biggest. The many times they say, yeah, come with us. Come with me. Yeah, I will show you how we do it. And, and, and that's where you have to stop. Because the scene, uh, we could uh, we could reenact, we could whatever. Oh, I could skip the scene. Uh, but I could not say to, to them, yeah, well, I am here. Let me do it. Never. Never. I went back many times. <laughs> I went back, not only this, you know, we have scenes in the harbor, we go, you know, swimming, like you see in the beginning, swimming and then to mm -hmm. the boat. Mm -hmm. uh, that's even more dangerous method, you know, like uh, mm -hmm. in the winter is very cold and then they hang in this opening in the, in the boats, in the big boats. Mm -hmm. And they, they may, you know, get freeze to that, they fall. Uh, so I could not tell them do this for the film.
And uh, um, the only way to do that, uh, yeah, well, give them uh, the camera to see the research, how it looked like. And then I stay there. Whenever they say we do it tonight, then I join them. Mm -hmm. And then you, uh, you know, like, uh, that was the only way. Uh, but never provocate it. Never, never uh, encourage them to do for the film. Never. Uh, now I'm curious if uh, maybe you have uh, uh, any questions uh, in uh, this uh, stage uh, and we will talk about the film Nowhere to Hide that you will uh, see afterwards. So if you have uh, some questions already now, uh, you can ask of course. Uh, if, uh, yes, uh, please and you have to pass the microphone. And you can ask in chat if you want. It's okay. Uh, you said you you were given a, a lot of boring material. Uh, so does it mean that you did you actually give any directions to them to them on a, a long distance, mm -hmm. or did you like said film whatever is interesting? Yeah, exactly. Uh, it, in this film, uh, all all the f the footage it was just uh, mainly mainly for the research mainly for me to understand how they live together, uh, what they think, what they thoughts, what they dreams, you know, like, uh, and what this, they were singing songs and all the songs to me meant something to them. You know, like they are young, they like some, you know, some track, it's like uh, about, about, about leaving the country, looking for good dreams, you know, like that, you know. Uh, so it was like, Whatever you film, whatever you, you, you have on tape. And the camera was a, a small Sony something with a tape. Uh, not, not too big deal. Um, and the, the reason with the trailer, with the, with the, the, uh, the, the, yeah, the big, yeah, on the track, uh -huh. um, it's black and white because I shot that in a, in a, a uh, night shot. Night yeah, uh -huh. you, you see it because it's dark, and mm -hmm. uh, I have also a very small because full of police. Police is all uh, everywhere. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I was filming uh, like illegally. Most of the film shot illegally. Um, I just got two time uh, because they give you only one month each time. I got two time. It was six years. Mm -hmm. So uh, to in order they don't put them in charge later on they police tell them why you why you give this journalist you know like uh, you bring bad picture to the country uh, he don't he just illegally filmed on it but then I have paper so I say anytime they say oh I've been filming during the permission so it's like you know you need to do that mm -hmm. uh, so so that was my thing and uh, therefore um, the footages um, that you know uh, they they filmed it was just for me to um, to understand how they do because they were talking we do like this we do like this and all the thing and each time I was there they you know they were siesta they didn't want to were cold and all these things so. So uh, we didn't uh, give them the instructions. Uh, no, no, no instruction. No, when, when you no, gave, no. The, gave them the camera. No, 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 no needed for instruction. No, uh, just, uh, just hold. You know, say some of the instruction you have to have the quality for the you know framing and all these things. You have to teach them a couple of things and uh, don't move too much. You know, like uh, hold it in. <laughs> So, so these instructions. So they, they were not yeah. filmmakers at all. No, 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 no. They were not. They uh, because I didn't want them to interfere. I just wanted to be uh, to making a portrait of that group and w w not interfering in the they uh, uh, they fate. Mm -hmm. uh, either they make it or they don't make it. Not not my business. I just follow you. Uh, whatever you do, I just follow and I protect you. You know, like things against the government I don't use um, uh, if you they you know some of that there were like they stole two cameras of me uh, and then I had like limit four cameras how many they steal four then I was going to quit 
but then it was two and I, I know why. Mm -hmm. So it was like, okay, you did it for good. And I told them afterward, you know, sell it if you want to have some money, but tell me, <laughs> I mean, you know, like trying to, yeah, not, not make it criminal. Don't, don't take it. Don't, you know, like that. So they, in the end, the group was like a really a tough, good group. They protect me also from, there are lots of criminals in the harbor mm. where every day somebody died there, killed by, you know, or overdose or, you know, all these things. So like, I go with uh, all my money, all my pocket, all my cameras and equipment alone, uh, and they were protecting me. So that's that's how the trust started. Uh, mm. uh, so some of the footages, some couple of footages I use in the film, it's not here, but in the harbor where we go, mm. uh, because I needed just a couple of things to de to clarify the the, mm. the scene. So I use that. Um, but this uh, this is a, a very good point where to uh, skip to the film, nowhere to hide, uh, because uh, there is the film where uh, you had to rely uh, on the protagonist yeah. uh, to shoot uh, the footage. So uh, here we are uh, completely changing uh, the the setup uh, of uh, preparing the film or shooting uh, the film. So uh, let's. Uh, screen the, the first uh, excerpt from nowhere to hide and then we will talk about uh, about uh, how did you find the protagonist and uh, and, and uh, how was the working with the material footage uh, from him uh, nowhere to hide uh, it's a it's also a long process uh, it's been going through uh, big changes uh, as i mentioned in the beginning uh, like spent three years on collecting material, no protagonist was like the way we see it in the film now. Uh, after three years, so I changed. I changed the film to this one. Uh, so uh, we are in a very dangerous part of the world. Um, at that time, it was one of the dangerous, but the dangerous test. At that time, there were no uh, Arab uh, Spring. There were no. Libya war, there were no Egypt, Tunis, Syria. The footages from Iraq was like the one now you are used to. So I got those footages and then Dr. Hans showed me those footages. I went to Iraq and then uh, we studied, no, this is, we have to document this type of war. We had in mind, uh, this is another type of warfare. Uh, this is the fourth generation warfare. That was the film. Filming the, you know, the, that's this kind of, you know, drones and controlling the sky and um, uh, the uh, untraditional army going into a country. Uh, like you see war now, it's not between countries. There are no countries fighting each other in the war now. But there are internally, there are forces going in. ISIS is one of them. Other groups are like, we don't hear too much about them, it's the same. They go in from whatever, they are well trained, they, are, they have also all the quality as an, an, as an army, they have intelligence, they have everything, but they are not representing a country, they are cross borders. And when you look at Iraq, uh, you see that kind of war, uh, we we thought, and we start actually in 2008. I didn't want to mention that to avoid the complication. Uh, I, I also went there, worked there for two years, uh, from 2008 to 2010, but it was not there. Mm -hmm. So we recruit, area. yeah, yeah, we recruit many people, doctors and uh -huh. also journalists, uh -huh. with the locals, uh -huh. to film. But it was not there. There, I was not. I was thinking Iraq. Iraq is there. And then we went to Iraq okay. uh -huh. Uh -huh. in 2010. Uh, so that that was the the idea of uh, bringing. And when I went there, I saw it was impossible to film there. It's almost you know, uh, even though I speak fluently Arabic, fluently Kurdish, with dialects, but then yet uh, it's not possible because you are not from these local areas, and and each one is different than the other. It's more. Uh, lots of conflicts, it's uh, sectarianism and ethnical problems, uh,
tribal problems, uh, terrorism, uh, but criminality, criminal criminal bands, and all these things uh, are there. So uh, we could not work like uh, the way I did with the other films. I was invited based on my work, based on Fata Morgana, and based on other films like uh, you know, m you know, because I had this skill uh, of keeping low and filming and uh, long bra bra breath. Uh, but then uh, I could not. It was like impossible. So we have to we have to think differently. And then uh, Dr. Hans, uh, with a, a, a local doctor, he's also brilliant. He's a hero, uh, Dr. Mudaffar, a Kurdish uh, Iraqi. Uh, both they were working with the war injuries. They say, well, we have this network, we have these medics. They are working for us. Um, and this guy, and they point out Nuri mm -hmm. uh, on a photo, he said, this guy is bringing these footages to us. And it was one of those suicide bombers. Like, it was like the first time ever I seen that devastating footages of people being parts, you know, here and then, people crying and, you know, like, it's a, it's a scene that's very devastating. So I was totally shocked. And that was Nuri. Uh, he had it uh, filmed in his mobile, uh, so so we say okay, we we bring better mobiles, small cameras, teaching them like that. So I start one year mm -hmm. teaching a group of uh, medics how to document, mm -hmm. and also I was filming the you know the the links, the other places, so wherever I could, because. Uh, another thing is very important to think about. Uh, sometimes filmmakers all always thinking about themselves. They talk about themselves. Like it was very dangerous for me. It's uh, I was almost got killed. But in reality, it's you are always a cause for a danger for those who are involved in, those who you involve, your main characters, your people are working with you. So the more you are low profile, the better they can survive. And they are local, so we found out the way to document without the eye of everybody talks who they are documenting for. Uh, they are medics mm -hmm. uh, on for purpose of um, uh, medication, medics uh, for purpose of studying the injuries, uh, all these things. So it's for the medication. So with that we survive. So we had a good. They call it a uh, uh, cova story so the cover story it was we are medic you know we are we did also you know like now we have a, a database a, a huge one so all the universities uh, like dr hans and the university in Tromsø, they establish a big network uh, database for or any doctors can go in any student uh, medic student can go and check these cases um, so we gather also that but it was it's a database of videos yeah yeah, yeah videos yeah, yeah. and uh, and uh, co uh, qualitative uh, interviews qualitative interviews mean you have specific pre prepared structured questions you send it to everybody mm -hmm. so that's a quali qualitative uh, it's a method of you know uh, research research and we did that, uh, so we started from there, one year, and I sent them out after one year in 2011 mm -hmm. to bring real stories. Like uh, They were bringing real stories, but they were like uh, safe, uh, uh, you know, safe stories. But then after one year of, of training, I sent them out with the real ones. You know? uh -huh. تعال ادق المنطقه بس كل تمام مجروح قبل ابد لا الحمد لله وش ما مجروح لا لا انت مو عراقي <تصفيق> أنا نوري شريف وهذه هي مستشفى جلالة
وانا اعمل بيها بصفه معاون طبي واغلب الاحيان اعمل بقسم الطوارئ صار لي اشتغل هنا اكثر من 13 سنه اعالج الناس مختلف اصاباتهم سواء كانت بسيطه او معقده بدايه عملي كنت اعالج الحالات البسيطه مثل الكسور قوالب الكسور والجروح والخياطه ولكن بالفتره الاخيره وخصوصا بعد الاحتلال الامريكي للعراق سنه 2003 تغير الوضع وحتى نوعيه الجروح تغيرت وهذا خلق لنا واقع جديد بمجال عملنا الطبي هو يوم جديد من تاريخ العراق وهو يوم استغلال كل واحد بالعراق انا اشعر بالفرح وهاي حاله حال الاف الناس واستغلال وهو استغلال اجمل شيء بالدنيا وبالوطن لكن اكو بعض الجرحى اللي انا جاي اعالجهم اللي تاثروا بالحروب اللي صارت بالعراق هم ما زالوا يشعرون بالحرب بعدها ما منتهيه وبعدهم عندهم انكسار نفسي حاد من هذه الحرب. تقدر توثق اذا اعطيناك كاميرا صغيره مثلا اذا انا اعلمك التصوير هذا؟ والله يعني احاول ايش اصور لك اياه؟ هاو ديد يو ديسايد ذات نوري ويل بي ذا وان؟ It's uh, it, it's very. Uh, you work with more doctors. Uh, you saw uh, quite much uh, footage, uh, but then you decided that your protagonist and also the one who will be shooting by himself uh, will be Nuri. So how uh, on based on what criteria did you decide for him? It's it's all, always the same criteria, you know. Like uh, the main <laughs> character, the protagonist, is the most difficult thing in, in a documentary about the characters. If you, if you are making a character-based film, you have to have a character, you know. And the same criteria was applying to Nuri as any other characters, you know, in a, in a film. So you have to have the character's will, you know, like uh, it's not giving up, it's trying all... But it doesn't matter if he, if he, if he succeeds or not. But the will that uh, that that the drive drive him the benzene the gas you know like he's he's putting the pedal all the time you know going that's very important for a character so he had that he had that all the time his gas was coming and telling me I have this story I have that why we not focus on this and all these things so he he was affecting me um, and also the other one that's uh, the the you know how true he is to his subject mm -hmm. of matter, mm -hmm. um, which uh, give me to trust him, like, okay, this is a guy I can't trust, mm -hmm. because uh, I'm going to meet him, and meet him, and meet him, and meet him, over and over again, and I'm going to rely on him to make a film, which is bigger than me, and bigger than him. And he's, it's not about him. That's a very, uh, very uh, difficult balance. It's like, it was about Juan Hajo in the film. He was the main character, it was about him. It was easy for me to follow him and you know, portray him. Mm -hmm. The Haraga was about this group of young people, but here it was not about Nuri, it was about the war that Nuri faced. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult, it's very difficult thin line between that and mm -hmm being about Nuri or it's about what Nuri going through. And, 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 you, and you also have to recognize his motivation, yeah. like why he, he wants to cooperate with you. On this. Exactly. So that's the main thing. That's the, that's the essential. What's in it for him? You know, what's the, his motivation? Because I knew my motivation. I was in Iraq. Uh, I went there prepared. I teach them and everybody like uh, working. But but then to pick Nuri, to change the whole story uh, after three years of spending like almost 250,000 euros uh, 
and changing, you know, like now this is this film is the old one is we cannot use going back and just like that, you know, like no, we do another film. It's like uh, you know, and you know, two hundred fifty thousand is it's a lot of money. But then I had a good argumentation for it when I went to the film institute, when I went to the other funders, uh, you know, and then and I, I had my pilots, and then I had, I, I knew, knew what I do. I had the character, I had the story. Um, and my, of course, the team was all backing me up, all of them, you know, like the producer was like, of course, we go to help her, so um, we go for it. And then, um, then the start of the thinking differently. At that time, I was not thinking the, the same. Now it's more talking about that, like Michael Moore, uh, we in, invite, uh, invited me to uh, Michigan, uh, to Travis. Uh, they had a new section there, uh, which is now too much talking about that. That's this uh, citizen journalism, mm -hmm. and that's the that's you know when I start, I didn't have any idea about that it's citizen journalism. You know, now now it's uh, the citizen journalism becoming uh, um, a genre, mm -hmm. and also films being made in Syria uh, also has the same. Uh, not the same thing, like a, a main character, because I, I don't think it's, there are any similar film to that, but the main character is the, the one telling the story through by the material, but of course with the instruction and, and also footages from me, but mm -hmm. the main footages, the main, the essential footages is from him. Mm -hmm. It's his. Mm -hmm. So that's a, the, a born of this citizen journalism and we uh, were, you know, like, uh, I, I, I went uh, to the festival, it was like a, a very nice festival, I hope one day you, you visit that festival, it's Michael Moore, and uh, we got the prize for him, you know, for Nuri. They gave him the, the prize of the citizen journalism, together with two other big films, like they're probably they are going for Oscar. So. Um, mm -hmm. That's the era of, you know, uh, uh, the citizen journalist. Mm -hmm. What's that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, uh, Nuri is a pioneer in this. And uh, there are really uh, tens of questions connected uh, to the film, but we will also have uh, uh, a space to talk after the screening, uh, because we will have a Q&A uh, after screening uh, of the film. So now, before we screen the film, uh, one uh, last uh, it's not only a question, it's really a topic. Uh, so uh, one, one last uh, question about uh, editing the whole material. Because it's a really very different work when you shoot yourself and you know what is on the material and you are thinking about, about the uh, possible outcome also during the shooting and you have it in, uh, in your head. head. But, uh, in this case, you obtained hours and hours of material and then you have to build a story, build some structure uh, that will make uh, a film that is really for some audience. Uh, you had a brilliant uh, editor and so uh, if you can describe uh, what what the work in the editing room looked like. Uh, how, how did you work with, with the editor with these tons of material? Yeah. Uh, Eva Hellstrom, uh, she's my, my hero. Uh, she's like, uh, uh, she, she's the, the, the invisible filmmaker in, in all my films. You know, she's been editing most of them. Uh, and I have a good dialogue with her, so we can read each other, you know, uh, and usually before I start to, you know, begin, I talk and talk and talk about the new idea. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So she had uh, the idea, but with this footage, uh, uh, for her was very difficult uh, to show her, like also for you as well, it was very difficult for me uh, seeing some of the footages, it's like it's a traumatic footage. Uh, and when you have, you know, the editors, like you, you put your soul into an air hand. And I wanted her to be very fresh and very healthy, not depressed. So I had to save her from loss of this very tough material. Um, but at the same time, you know, I have to uh, translate it, you know, make it clear, you know, put some 
uh, tags on them that uh, you know uh, filtering that is not so brutal, like open wound and things like that. Uh, um, so that that was the the practical problem with it. So we solved that, mm -hmm. and then uh, to to have like seven hundred hours there, it's almost impossible for an editor with a with a four five month of editing, you know, because otherwise you don't have money, you know. Uh, but um, I knew I knew every frame of the material. I always know every frame in all my materials and all my films. I know them every. I, I translate them all of them. Uh, even I translate all the all the things in every stupid sentence in every stupid picture. Like you think, ah, oh, what? Why you translate? Because when she look at them, so you know she can call me two o'clock in the night. What he's saying here, and it's a stupid thing, you know. Like you know, a tri trivial <laughs> has nothing to do. But she wants to hear. So in the end, I had had to translate everything. Uh, yeah, it's almost maybe eight, nine thousand pages. I don't know, and also the huge budget of uh, um, you know translating it. You know, mm -hmm. I had two brilliant uh, girls that they translate in 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 Baghdad. I never met them, but they are like, you know, my my also really good uh, translator because you need to trust them. Mm -hmm. Everything here is a trusted team. You know, like no no way of uh, having any holes. Mm. So you have to mm. tighten all holes, you know, that you cannot bring anyone you cannot, you have a little doubt, you know, like, mm. because there are a lot of sens sensitive uh, <laughs> material here, yeah. like a huge sensitive, I mean like, uh, you know, who killing who, you know, who's doing, you know, all this material, I don't want to go to the details, but, so you need to have a, a huge, huge security for it, mm -hmm. and you cannot put it in a bank or yes. thing, like you have to have the people working with you. So these two translators were mm -hmm. beautiful uh, uh, work uh, they did. Um, um, I managed to integrate them in the raw material, translate the all other things. Some of the very, very, very um, sensitive, uh, dangerous uh, that Nuri was saying, mm -hmm. I did myself, you know, like uh, translated myself, mm -hmm. which took many, many days. Uh, for like maybe 100, 150 hours and uh, then uh, we start uh, to think okay um, what we want to tell how where to start mm -hmm. so you have uh, this if you also you can use that method for fiction as well it's very good for documentary um, I call it like five point of no returns structure where you have five things that you put in the film that you can put uh, for the story to build um, so you go for that you have it in your mind you may have ten but you choose five of them they are like a, they are like acts uh, so you you have like with the, they, these are like we start in the film with one of them American pulling out. That's the that's the start. And McKee uh, call it uh, inciting incidents. That the one kicking the story, you know, like the ball, mm -hmm. the story start. Mm -hmm. And that's the one uh, the inciting incidents. It's like American pulling out, changing something, like something that happened. Mm -hmm. So you follow, and then something else happening, and then you follow, and then the story changing, the whole development changing. Always with these points are changing to develop something else. So that's uh, that's that's the structure for the whole uh, material, and then to just finish that part for the editing, and then categorizing uh, interviews here, cases. What's this case about? What's this case about? And putting all the material that looked like this, and then Nuri's story along, the possibility of developing it. It's a very complicated, but once you have that on the table. Uh, on the wall, uh, try to structure it uh, loudly in your, in your mind and then transfer it to the wall. And we made a Inuri's universe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the film's universe, you know, and the topic was uh, war. And the universe was like uh, galaxies. 
the hospital was one of them and the house was one of them his family his friend was one of them and then the events that happened it was the other one mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. the doctor Suleimania where he go and you know like that was another galaxy so mm -hmm. you have to put the galaxies around him and then you find uh, this line of story how changing how it's curving back and then driven it further to something new that's the point of no no return that's these are the five things you have to have and then once you have that uh, so it's much easier to structure your your material mm -hmm. and also build the scene upon that and, and this i was interested if these five uh, uh crucial points if you define them together with the editor or you're the one who say these will be the points and you editor now you can categorize the material and uh, we, we will build the galaxies uh, so you, you uh, make it together in, in the dialogue to identify these five points you it's best way is to do it together because you get to know each other better uh, thoughts uh, all of these things are together with my I spent most the second most largest time was with Nuri the first large time with Nuri mm -hmm. the second was with the Eva I all, all, always sleep at uh, her place you know like staying there and uh, you know working day and night together uh, so all the time the editor is the, your 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 savior it's the editor is the the you know the one you have to very much take care and give uh, a lot uh, to what she has to say mm -hmm. because she is there to make the film for you mm -hmm. and it's very important to have it theoretically you know like not blocking it not saying uh, okay from A to Z it should be like that there is nothing it's not good to have like should it's it's better to have possibilities to change so maybe we go from A to Z maybe it will happen that way or it will go that way doesn't matter but don't block it so these things you have to discuss with the editor so these galaxies this uh, some of them are not there and we had this red color for them like we say okay Nuri um, I need a, a, a scene where he's uh, doing stitching somebody he's saying something I don't have that so uh, I know he's doing that. I know he's um, that. Okay, maybe we can document. If not, I go. And you know, mm -hmm. like this is the the mm -hmm. thing is being all the time. So it's like that's also part of why it took too long mm -hmm. to get the you know because you cannot. That's a slow cooking movies. You know, you slowly and slowly cooking it, like you do with the uh, meat or mm -hmm. you know. So it's uh, mm -hmm. um, it's important that you take this. Uh, thing with your editor and then trying to tr draw this uh, make that universe mm -hmm. and then build the universe uh, later on by material or by things you 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 write mm -hmm. to just visualize the scenes visualize the p potential in the material and potential in the character you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so it's yeah so maybe you have like 10 galaxies but you use like seven of them doesn't matter so you skip some of them but Go forward and build that universe and build a structure to it. Yeah. Thank you so much for, for all the, the, the answers and that you uh, allowed us to uh, look into your uh, creative thinking and uh, the, the method and also how was it developed through different uh, kinds of films that you made. Uh, so thank you very much for now. Uh, now we will have a three minute uh, break for a quick coffee and after that we will screen the film Nowhere to Hide and after the film uh, we still will have 15-20 uh, uh, minutes for Q&A. So all the questions that you maybe uh, have now or you will have after uh, seeing the film uh, you are very welcome uh, to, to ask and Zara Desht will be here after the screening. Thank you.